I'll, I'll put my end of my career up against anybody's. That was freaking awesome. I hit it and it starts going, and I'm like, no way I get a home run. I'm gonna run right out these stadium gates on the right and just take it to the house. You're walking off the field for the last time as a World Series champion. It doesn't get better than that. Everybody remembers the home run. I remember so much more. This place has been buzzing for the last couple of hours, but I will say this, there's also a tension here. I walk into the locker room that day and like everybody's playing Mario Kart game seven of the World Series. I was like, hey idiots, can we get off the Mario Kart and get locked in? Everybody's coming up to me and they're like, dude, this is your last game, how you feel? I'm like, I don't care how I feel, let's focus on the game. That was our team, we were loose. It's so important because it's not gonna be a blowout game, not game seven of the World Series for the Cubs, it's not gonna happen. We give you a look at the Chicago lineup. Kyle Hendricks has thrown 15 straight scoreless innings this postseason coming into this start. And John Lester heading out to the bullpen in case he's needed. Joe had called me in his office in the morning of the game, and he just said, hey, I plan on going Kyle, John, Chappie. He just said, pretty sure you're, you're going to get in the game with John, so just be ready. He took the nerves to a whole other level. Just like, OK, just kept going up, you know? Like, yeah, now I'm nervous. I'm going to play. I actually went down to the bullpen to help warm him up, which I normally wouldn't do. The adrenaline down the bullpen's even more. You're in the mix of the fans. You know you might get in. Kyle was actually pitching really well, gotten, had gotten out of a, some big jams, but I knew Johnny was getting close. So we all put our heads together. That's a really interesting conversation with David Ross coming in from the bullpen. My two cents was John's been throwing down there for a while. He's on, I think, two days rest and you don't want him to spend all his bullets down there in the bullpen. That's ball four to extend the fifth. You got a two out walk there to Santana. We like the matchup to Kipnis with Lester. So Joe makes the move. I think everything's uh, going well and, and until I get in the game. If Lester comes in, so does Ross. Those two are a package deal. The relationship between me and John is pretty, pretty special. We've been through some, some hairy times. And I tell him all the time, I was like, if you stink, I don't get to hit. They pinch hit for me, so you need to be good for me to get my at-bats. David Ross takes over behind the plate. I'm trying to control my emotions, and I'm in charge of his performance and emotion. Game seven, last game of your career, it's not the, not the easiest thing I've ever done, but. And the batter is Kipnis. Kipnis, he hadn't touched anything off John in game five, so we're just gonna stay away with fastball cutter. Uh -huh. John had owned him and he couldn't stay on that pitch with the angle that, that John had. So we're just gonna do that and make him beat us the other way. He, he wasn't staying on the ball at all and that kind of where the swinging bunt comes from. And this is Ross. I bounce out to get it. My right hamstring grabbed me, rushed the throw and almost get Rizzo killed. It's just bad, it's just, that's not what we're working on. That's not how we're supposed to do it. Uh, then you got this craziness with, with, with Lindor coming up. Man, oh gosh. This has the feeling of like the eighth inning. We're at the bottom of the fifth. Second and third, two out. Here's Lindor. Lindor hits strike breaking balls from left handers pretty good in the report. So we know when we throw him a breaking ball, it's got to be bounced. Hopefully he swings over, it's the goal, or he takes it, right? And we move on. But just the, the key there is we don't throw for a strike. We go breaking ball, second pitch. I was like, okay, John's gonna bounce this. Well, he took it literally, I think it was like a 30 foot breaking ball. It hits me in the mask, kicks off all the way to our dugout, and I fall back over, roll my ankle, and then that's all she wrote. Bounces in, it hits Ross, a run scores. Here comes Kipnis. He's safe. It's 5-3. Things just got a lot more interesting. That's kind of what rookies, young players happen, like the game speeds up on them. That's what happened to me in that moment. A strikeout ends the inning, and already the game has changed. I get in the dugout places, now it's electric. And I gotta be like, wait a minute, I gotta hit, like I'm up second. I'm on deck and I'm like, slow the heart rate, breathe a little bit, relax, like you gotta have an at bat right here. 
And my thinking is, what's Andrew going to do? Mr. Lights Out, Andrew Miller. I got good numbers off Andrew, and that that's why I thought I might get an at-bat. But the caveat to that is Andrew used to stink. <laughs> like, Andrew used to not be very good. And then he went to Boston and got really good. When I got to Boston, got to catch him, I'm like, wait, this is the nastiest dude on the planet. And that slider is just devastating. Popped up. One out. The man at the plate, David Ross. I'm trying to talk to myself about my plan. And I said to myself, you hadn't had an at-bat in three days, just take the first pitch. Huh? I knew his pitch is a slider, but I don't care if you're looking for the slider, it's still almost impossible to hit. You don't pick it up. I just remember like not even seeing this ball so tall and he hides the ball so well and he throws hard, you see the ball and it just disappears. So I'm 0-2 and I saw that pitch real well. He threw me a fastball and I was like, oh, I saw that. Okay, he's fixing to throw me another slider and he shook. And I did my homework. His pitch is the slider, but he shakes a lot of fastball. When he shook, I was like, sell out to heater. Ross flies one into center. I was choked up. I shortened my stride, just threw my hands at the ball. It was where I like it. Sends Davis back at the wall. I hit it and it starts going. And Rajay's running back. I see him sizing it up and I'm like, I'm not getting robbed of a home run in game seven. Jay Hay meet me there. Boom. And then Dex meets me at the top step. Boom. And everybody's fired up in the dugout. We're back. It was so important for my mental state and I think for everybody's. And the Cubs fans, I'm sure, took a big sigh of relief. Like, you know, with all the 108 years and all that's went wrong, you know, we won. That's all that matters. This is going to be a tough play. Play it. The Cubs win the world.